I have made it very clear to the President that it is not something we relish doing, but it is something that we absolutely will do, because Canadians, we're polite, we're reasonable, but we also will not be pushed around. That statement by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau triggered President Donald Trump, setting him off on a nasty personal Twitter attack, calling Justin Trudeau meek and mild, and then following up with a very dangerous trade threat to Canada's economy, ending the G7 meeting in what can only be described as an ominous disaster. The tweet read, PM Justin Trudeau of Canada acted so meek and mild during our G7 meetings, only to give a news conference after, saying, I left saying that UF tariffs were kind of insulting and he will not be pushed around. Very dishonest and weak. But that tweet was followed up by a much darker one saying, based on Justin's false statements at his news conference and the fact that Canada is charging massive tariffs to our US farmers, workers and companies, I have instructed our US representatives not to endorse the communique as we look at tariffs on automobiles flooding the US market. And that is the key phrase, tariffs on automobiles. That would be, as a senior liberal source told me, close to an existential threat to Canada's economy. It could happen as early as July, and Canada would have to hit pack. This is now galloping towards an all-out trade war. So, where do we go from here? Let's find out. Joining me now to make some sense on this is the former U.S. Ambassador to Canada, Jim Blanchard, the former interim leader of the Conservative Party of Canada and the advisor on the government's NAFTA panel, Rana Ambrose, and the former Premier of Quebec and former Deputy Prime Minister, Jean Charest. Ominous uh, mor morning. i got to start with you, Rana Ambrose. What did you make of Donald Trump's tweets and especially the threat to the auto industry? Well, like you said, it is an existential threat, but it is not the first time he's made it. Uh, he, as you know, as, as recently as a couple weeks ago, threatened 25% tariffs on our auto sector, both to Canada and to Mexico. And this has been a part of how he has operated and negotiated throughout the NAFTA renegotiations. Uh, Jim Blanchard, let, let me talk to you. Uh, the bromance, the Trudeau whisper, clearly over. I mean, these are classic yeah. Trump Twitter shots. What do you make of how this G7 ended? Well, look, the, the president has a personality disorder. I'm being diplomatic, but he is a malignant narcissist. So if you criticize him, he lashes back. That's what this is. The reality is that Congress, the auto industry, and I can say that being from Michigan, is not going to allow this kind of chicanery with auto trade. All right. In fact, the auto industry and American farmers want to see NAFTA renewed. And nobody believes steel tariffs somehow affect our national security. So this is all, he's just having temper tantrums and it's a good thing he's moving on to Singapore. He wants to be different. He wants everyone to be a supplicant. Uh, and he can't, he can't handle criticism. And I think he's becoming unhinged over the whole Russian investigation. Uh, well, I, okay, there's a lot there. Mr. Schreier, how do you read it? Is it just, is it as, as Ambassador Blanchard said, a kind of narcissism, like just a bluster, or does this become, does Canada have to prepare for an escalating trade war? Well, I think we, we have to prepare. We're very worried and should be very worried on this side for two reasons. On a day-to-day -day basis, the Trump administration is confusion and chaos, but on the key issues he ran on, which includes the wall and taxes and trade and deregulation, he has remained constant. The second thing we've observed, Evan, in the last year is that he tends to follow through on the threats he makes, and that includes the tariffs on steel and aluminum, which he followed through on. On cars, his initial target a few months ago was Germany. In the case of Canada, uh, we exported 22% of the cars that were sold in the United States last year. 56% uh, of what's bought in the United States last year was made in the United States. The rest comes from Mexico, mostly Canada. And then you would have Germany and South Korea and Japan are the biggest suppliers. If he follows through on the threat uh, for Canada, it will be a catastrophe. Okay, so Ron Ambers, if that's the case, I've already heard some say Canada's got to do some things. For example, he really is attacking what's called supply management, our protected dairy system. Uh, some are saying we got to immediately start negotiating and open that up. Does that give in to a bully or is that a pragma pragmatic thing to stop a much more nasty set of tariffs on autos? 
Well, I think in a, in a trade uh, negotiation, we have to be willing to put everything on the table. And I know this is an extremely, pardon the pun, sacred cow. <laughs> I was part of a government that also protected supply management, and I know exactly why that matters politically in our country, because of all of the dairy farmers in Ontario and Quebec. It's very politically sensitive, but let's face it, when Trump says that we have uh, tariffs on our dairy sector, we do, in fact. And so... You know, this is part of the negotiation. Having said that, it is extremely politically sensitive. So, you know, I think, though, now with this, this <coughs> threat of autos, this has escalated uh, quite substantially. And so I wouldn't be surprised uh, that we have to start thinking about other ways in which we can bring things to the table. Um, the problem here, though, is on the auto file, which is the big win for Trump, Mexico just isn't able to get to where Trump wants them to go for very good reason, for competitive reasons in their own economy. So, you know, that's not something that Canada can manage and uh, Canada can solve. The other part of this is NAFTA is in place. NAFTA is functioning. I don't believe that Trump's going to rip up NAFTA. Uh, so another strategy here is to just also try and ride this out. Well, you may ride out, but Jean Charest, you're saying he, he does what he says. Uh, do we start, yes. do we put supply management on the table? Uh, Justin Trudeau says he's not going to no. do it, but you say no. Well, uh, Evan, if, if they say supply management, then we say farm subsidies. I mean, the, the Americans have a, a surplus in the milk industry as they have a surplus in eggs and poultry. And, uh, it, you know, countries may, in certain areas, choose to be more protectionist. It's true in the telecommunications industry in Canada. It's true in the banking industry in Canada. And the Americans have their own areas in which they are. So if the Americans yeah. say we want to go after agriculture, well, then we'll say farm subsidies. And by the way, the American farming uh, community isn't asking for a dismantlement of everything on the Canadian side. They're saying do no harm. And so what I, in the end, in the end, what should happen as of today, and I think Jim has put his finger on it, is that the American industry on automotive farming are just going to have to double down, including the Chamber of Commerce. And really, they've been very good at pressuring. Right. They have to double their game right now. Yeah. Otherwise, we may walk okay, ourselves into a disaster. Uh, we may walk. Jim Blanchard, what's the way out of this? Well, I think a, a part of it is just to give it a little time. The other is to make sure we're all in contact, and I think the Prime Minister, the Premiers can help as well. Be in contact with the business leaders in the United States, labor leaders, Congress. Look, they all, at this point, support renewing NAFTA. Ron, a last word real quick. i got about 30 seconds. I think the only thing I'm concerned about, we all agree that the business community needs to double down, and you know, state governors need to double down. The problem is, even the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, I don't necessarily think Trump listens to any of them. And they have warned him against a number of things he has done, and he has, you know, against their word and <coughs> advice, gone out and leveled aluminum and steel tariffs, leveled, tar you know, leveled um, trade action against our aerospace sector, and we wouldn't be surprised if he does it against our, our dairy sector and perhaps our auto sector. So I think we have to be prepared for anything. Prepared for anything. A dangerous, volatile time. All right, I really want to thank you for reacting, Jean Charest, Ambassador Blanchard, and thank Ronna you. Ambrose. As always, uh, great to have all thank three you. of you on the program.